Hi everyone, I wanted to come back and do a little bit more on this page from the Autumn Harvest book by Teresa Goodridge. I'd only done a little bit of this in the as part of a demo to try out the paper um, when I was doing my flip through and I just felt that I wanted to just finish this little cornucopia area on this page and I thought I would just finish it with you guys um, and then if you had sort of thought that you were going to start colouring along you might have been disappointed because I didn't finish so I thought I would just make it into a little video and uh, finish it off so let's come in a little closer I also had my happen to still have my polychromos open on the desk here so I just thought before I switch them for another set for my next video I would just finish this so where should we start well we have quite a few more pumpkins left to do so let's start on those I quite often like doing pumpkins in slightly different tones and shades of colour I'm not sure whether it always um, looks right but we're going to have a go so I'm going to actually start with the terracotta on this one here and this is drawn in a very different way to this one what I'm going to do is use this line here as if that's the sort of deep bit, you know, the, the bit that's, and then maybe fade that out a bit so that that line's actually the external bit. I don't know if it's going to work, but that's how I'm going to do it anyway. And then that one there. I get a bit confused with all the lines. I don't really know much about pumpkins, to be honest. So, just I sometimes I think is that a sticky out bit or yeah, I don't know. I'm just having a go, doing my best, and having fun. So now I'm going to go for my orange glaze. I don't know how well you can see. It's a bit. It feels a bit gloomy in here for all of a sudden because I've just shut the blind, because um the sun is pouring in all of a sudden. And so it is, uh, just fill all that in, I think. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, I've had to shut the blind. Now it's gloomy, but uh, I've got the lamp on. Okay, I don't think that is dark enough in there. I'm going to go back to my terracotta. Let's have a bit more play in that space. Let's just get some more colour in there. Now, I know it's a bit all early for autumn, but my friend Mary sent me this book. Thank you, Mary because um, she said that we were both feeling the heat and not really enjoying summer anymore. Well, I don't enjoy summer at all, the heat that is. Um, I'm going to use the cadmium orange and start playing with these sections. Um, that's our dippy in bit, that's our first up thing. I'll start here. Um, so she said that having an autumnal book might help us to feel cool, which I thought was a fabulous idea. And um, so, so yeah, I thought it was great. And she's bought herself one too, which is a good idea. Um, I'm going to do a little bit here, sort of gently spread it in a bit. And um, also, it's not that far away. You know, autumn, it's, um, I looked it up because I was interested. When does autumn start? You know, because I thought, well, I'll tell you. And um, um, apparently in the UK, this is um, dark chrome yellow. I'm going to use to just finish off these little spaces. Um, in the UK, autumn officially starts on different day each year, depending on the equinox. Um, and I think it's around the 21st, 22nd of September, something like that. So I can't give you an exact date because I wasn't paying that much attention. However, the meteorological, oh, that's a long word, isn't it, year, um, is different and September start, um, and the 1st of September is autumn, so that's cool. So it depends on how you count it, really. Now this one is similar to this one. What I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to colour it in a different way. Um, slightly, just thinking, where should I start? Uh, I'm going to start with this. Uh, uh, I'd never make a good TV presenter, would I? Uh, cadmium orange, you never hear a TV presenter saying, um, I was watching a um, course, I was talking about this in a video, which you won't have seen yet, potentially. Anyway, and uh, there, the guy there in this colouring course, no, it was a drawing course, and it doesn't matter what it was, um, it's not relevant to the point I'm trying to make, um, he never said, um, he never stuttered over a word, 
but there were lots of jump cuts in the video where presumably he did stutter and then he cut it out and I think yeah if you want to do professional presenting then that's how you have to be isn't it you don't see someone on the newsreader going um um you know I mean I guess they are reading a script so maybe that's a lot easier I don't know never tried to do that now the dark chrome yellow um but I'm always going um all the time um and I talked to my son about it yesterday and he said that um if you're um 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 <laughs> If you are training to be a live presenter, you can't say, um, because it makes you look thick. <laughs> Cheers, love. <laughs> Thanks, son. I feel really good now. Um, so, <laughs> so he said you get trained to not say it. I'm going to use a green in these lines. I'm sure I've seen a pumpkin with green bits in there. I'm going to... No, I'm not going to do it green. <laughs> I'm going to do it in this. Um, this is light flesh, which is otherwise known as beige red. Maybe it's this colour. So he said that they are trained to pause rather than say um. And then they don't look thick. Oh, that's interesting. But yay, I just carry on looking thick. <laughs> I don't know how often I say it. I don't want to go back and count. Oh my, that'd be scary. I haven't done the little top bits yet. I'll do them at the end. I've got this big one. I want it to look a bit like this one. So I'm going to pick a line and then just sort of go for it. Um, the colour, colour, colour. I I think I'll use this. I just want to mix it up a tad. So I'm going to use the burnt ochre to start with and I'm going to sort of mark out our dips. So this is my sort of shadowy section here and I'm just going to sort of fade it a bit like that. Uh, a little bit more maybe like that. I think also some when you're most live presenters aren't on their own they have someone else helping them but no i couldn't do it could i that one i think but hey i'm i was gonna say i'm not a professional but i guess definition wise i am because i earn money so i'm a professional ummer <laughs> orange glaze I'm going to get over the top of this and then spread it out a bit towards the edge <laughs> but it's, it's, it's interesting isn't it I was also reading some stuff about the Paralympics which was uh, good talking about the different Team GB um, people that we've got taking part some men, some women um it was, uh, yeah, it was interesting, get me thinking about it. I don't know how much of it, they don't really show it much, so um, I'm not sure whether we're going to get to see much or whether it will just be a little sort of um, news articles to read on progress and things. It's a shame that they don't have their coverage, but unfortunately there just isn't the interest in it like there is. I'm going to use a different colour. Pencils rolling everywhere. I'm going to use a dark cadmium yellow for this one. They, yeah, there just isn't the interest in it. It's a shame. But I guess they can't afford to show it all the time if no one's watching it. So they don't. I, the, it's a bit of a um, cart and horse thing, isn't it? No, that's wrong. No. What's the phrase I'm looking for? Chicken and egg? No, that's not right either. Um, If they showed it, people would know about it. They might watch it more. That's, you know, but if they don't, you know, but it's a risk. So they don't. Right, I'm going to put a bit of brown on this one. This is my new car. I just want to emphasise these bits here. Just try and make it look slightly more three-dimensional. Like that. I'm hoping that's going to work a little bit. And here. I think it's working a bit. It's looking a bit yellow. Yes, 
looking a bit too yellow. I'm going to use my lightest orange. I'm just going to move my pencils. The pencils getting in my way. Naughty pencils. This is a cadmium orange. I'm just going to orange it up a bit because that's a word. Shh, it is. Yeah. I'm just going over it a little bit. To see, it's this one that looks just a bit too yellow. That's better. Don't really see cornucopias like this. Well, cornucopias at all in the UK very much. I mean, I've heard of it, which means they obviously exist, but don't really. This is the earth green yellowish. I'm going to do all the stems. Um, I don't really see them anymore. Maybe they're old fashioned in this country. I don't know. I mean, I don't know whether they are in the US as well, whether they're an old fashioned thing that that is just is just because this is a sort of whimsical book rather nice or whether um people do use them for their halloween no autumn sort of decorations i don't really know we, we just don't do this do it to the same extent permanent green olive i'm gonna do some sort of shadowy bits on the underside of the stem there and here then on this one just here where i sort of scribbled and on this leaf in the middle. Yeah, we don't, we don't do it. Are we just boring? I mean, we don't have Thanksgiving, which is a shame in a way. Oh, this one. Um, let's go back to our earth green yellowish. Um, yeah, I think it's a shame we don't do Thanksgiving. I think it would do us all good to uh, have a think and, you know, be thankful for what we've got. Permanent green olive. I think it's a good thing to do anyway. At any time of the year but i guess it's all related into the harvest which makes sense apples now i'm thinking i've got our green pears so should we do them red i think that might be nice Oops, i'm trying to push up but i don't want to there we go red mm, uh, what sort of red are apples i'm gonna try a base of this because it's it's more of a dulled red the venetian red and see how it looks Let's just pop the red down. Oh, it's a bit too dull, but that's okay. We'll um, we'll brighten it up. So just do a light coat. Oh, a light coat. Be nice to wear a light coat again. Be cooler weather. Mm. I don't. Know. I guess some people probably think that I'm really boring because I don't like sun and heat and things, and I don't mind sunshine as long as it's not burning me. Um, which it so often does. This is the deep red. We're going to use a bit of this. Um, start with this back one. I'm thinking perhaps more on the edge and just sort of fade it in a bit to sort of help with the illusion that our apple has got some shape. It's a bit rounded. Like that. There we go. Do the same on this one. So I'm not covering the whole thing just fading towards the middle and keeping some of that duller red in the center a sort of bit of shine drawn on this one so we can leave that showing like we did on our pears i put some white on those didn't i now if you didn't see me color the other items i did it in my flip through of this book at the end so you can watch the video and if you've if you're not interested in watching the whole video you can sort of flip to the end and watch that bit um i'm looking for a brown here we go now this is my new gar that i used earlier and i'm gonna use it for these stems i'm just gonna pop it down really easy but i'm looking here and i want to put a bit here i know i thought I'd finish these but I'm just feeling that I want to put a bit of shadow along these bits I don't really know why but I've done it now um I might like to put a bit of shadow between all of these items in a bit I got an apple leaf to do and I'm gonna do a little bit darker or 
less yellowy. So this is the permanent green. I think it might be a little bit brighter than the green on the um, pumpkin. Now let me have a little look. Yeah. I'm going to do the sweet corn. I'm trying to think. Colour. Obviously yellow, but which one is the question? I'm going to use the light chrome yellow. Now, don't press too hard here. I'm just going to put it down an initial sort of layer. I'm thinking hard about my sweet corn. How would it work with regards to shadow? underneath each kernel or around each kernel? What sort of colour would it be? I can't eat corn on the cob. I, like, I love squeak corn, it's lovely, but I've got a bit of a broken tooth at the front of my mouth on the bottom. It's hidden, you can't really see it, thankfully, but even if it's filled, if I, if I have it filled, it doesn't need filling, dark cadmium and yellow because it isn't that deeper chip but um, I'm going to try and put a bit of shadow underneath each kernel with this like that um, if I am um, if I eat I can't really bite with it because I'm worried that I might chip more off I'm going to do a bit on the side on each edge just sort of either side of the black lines really so I don't eat on it very much. So if I want to bite into eat anything, let's say I was going to eat an apple, I would just cut it up yeah, rather than bite into it. And um, I don't, and so I can't eat corn on the cob. You can't really cut it up, which is a shame. I have tried, but it, it's tricky. I'm used to not being able to bite things. I, gosh, it's such a long time ago though. Just going around each one here. When I was um, a teenager, I had a brace. Um, these sort of, what we used to call tracks. I don't know what they call them now. Retain, not retainers, those aren't the right ones. Anyway, I have retainers after. So you can't eat, you can't bite into things because you shred it with your braces and then you knock them off your teeth. So, um, so, um, I sort of got used to not biting into things and then I just sort of stopped doing it. Really. So you could go harder under each one and make it more three dimensional, but to be honest, I don't know if it's going to make a huge difference. I think it looks quite tasty. It's gone a bit dark. Um, I'm going to use this um, grass green for the um, leaves because I always think they're quite light. So I'm just going to put a lightish layer down here. These, the polychromos work really well on this paper, by the way. Um, I found the um, Stedlers were a little bit hard work because I, one of the that was Stedler, wasn't it? It's a little bit hard work, but Stedlers are always harder work than polychromos anyway. So it might just have been me but I need to try out other pencils. Maybe I'll use this page as a try out for different pencils. It could be a good one to do that with because you won't really notice. Uh, I'm trying to, I think that's a leaf. I'm <laughs> struggling to see what I'm doing. There we go. And then this one. Uh, that's one. What's that? I think that might be the basket there. I think I'll colour it as basket, I know it's not going to look odd. But I'm going to add a little bit of darker colour to some parts of the leaves first. So we've got our leaf green. Um, just going to think about, you know, down here it might, there might be a bit of shadow sort of coming up there. Maybe a bit under here. Just being fussy now. A little bit there and under here. Just playing really here and there. Now this book is interesting, it's slightly crudely drawn I would say, in the sense that if you look at something by Hannah or Johanna, the lines are very confident and sh sh whereas here they're a little bit thin and wobbly in places, which for me indicates a little bit less 
control, a little bit less confidence in the line, but they're very pretty. I have not got a problem with it at all. I'm just going to sharpen my raw amber. I'm going to use that for the base of our basket. Now, remembering to do a little bit in here. This is a light layer, by the way. And I'm going to do the whole thing. And then we'll play around with some different colours and things like that in a minute. So just to get a basic brown down there. I mean you might want to do it slightly more yellowy tone if you want it to look more um, wickery. I don't really know what colour these are now. What's that? Now is that a bit of the basket and if it is why isn't there a bit there? I'm just going to colour it. I don't know. I don't want to spend too long worrying about it. We'll just colour it. There we go. So there's our base. Now I'm going to put a second layer of this same pencil in some areas to make to show some emphasis. So I am thinking all the way around the edges it might be a little bit darker because remember our cornucopia is not a flat two-dimensional item. It is quite a rounded sort of conical, almost cone, not conish, but so it would be darker on those edges which are slightly turned in and the same on this side. So we'll put a slightly harder colour there and then just fade it in like that. Now under here there's a sort of lip so there'll be a bit of shadow there as there would under each layer. So although we've got a black line there, I'm just going to put a darker bit of brown as well. Oops, like that. I'm getting a bit carried away there. And we've also got this bit of weave. I'm just going to put a little bit to the side of some of the lines there. Try and give it a bit of depth. And then I want to go either side of these little downwards pieces. These I'm going to colour a different colour in a minute. But at the moment I'm just going to try and put in what I think hopefully will look a little bit like a shadow. Because I feel that these bits are sticking up a little bit. Now I was thinking of doing them darker brown. But I think I might actually do them in a lighter colour. And although the lighter colour won't stand out on top of the brown, it will um, brighten it, that area, and hopefully make it look a different colour. I'll give it a try. Watch and see if you like it. So this is my Naples yellow I'm going to be using. So I'm just going to go over each of these ones, hoping that they just look like they're made of this very slightly different material. I always imagine that these will be lighter, you see. This is an easy way to do it without having to miss that bit out when you're colouring your initial layers. So, here is our basic, but what I want to do now is to do a little bit of shadow behind the vegetables. Um, you don't have to do this bit, but I'm going to grab my dark sepia and I'm just going to think about where they would be throwing shadow. So, for example, this pumpkin here would be throwing some shadow on this one behind. So I'm just putting, going to put, I'm going to make that bottom bit darker anyway because it's near the ground. I feel it would be darker. And then just put a little shadow around there like that. And then the same on this one here. And then I'm thinking maybe a little bit underneath the uh, stalk. I call it a stalk. No, you think storks are those birds that carry new babies? Maybe they are. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> now, I put a little bit behind the apples here. As I say, I'm being quite fussy. 
you don't have to do this bit. And here, we've done a bit between the pairs already when we coloured those and let's do a little bit behind them here. Do a little bit on the bottom of this apple. It might not even really show up that much but it just makes me feel like I've done something a bit more for you, giving you an idea. I'm just really going where objects are touching each other, putting a little bit in. Yeah, that'll do. I'm not going to do any more than that. I think that's plenty. So that is our cornucopia. I could do some of the other items on this page too, but not today. It's a 26 minute video. I think that's plenty for now. So uh, there he is. I think he's rather cute. Um, so that's nice. We've got a lot of leaves on this page too. Lots of opportunities for autumnal colour. As well as the orange for the pumpkins, you could do browns and oranges, reds yellows on your leaves as well as some greens it should be rather nice got that oh the white bit i knew there was something i should be doing that's why i was nattering so i like to just go over the top of the black line because we don't have a black line around the sort of shine of fruit you can put some shine on other bits too but i feel that the um maybe like this apple I'm just going to do, I wouldn't normally do one that looked like this if I was doing it myself. But I feel that I should match it to that. So that's what I'm doing, just a sort of similar shape. So that'll do. I don't think pumpkins are always terribly shiny. Maybe that's just me. I don't know loads about pumpkins, but there we go. Anyway, thank you for watching. I um, hope you have a super day and happy colouring.